Brother Nick um, Georges, God bless you. Um, would you like to give us a praise report or a testimony? Not tonight. Do you have any prayer requests? Your strength in the Lord. Amen. Well, we once again, we thank God. Did anyone else come on the praise word in the prayer call? Amen. Amen. Once again, we thank God. Hallelujah. For Minister R. Corley and Brother Nick Georges for just coming on and, and just blessing the Lord with us. Praise God. Blessing the Lord together. Praise God. This is a line of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we just thank God for just counting us worthy to be on for such a time as this. Praise God. In our life. Praise God. Hallelujah. And in this nation. Praise God. At this appointed time where this is going out everywhere. Praise God. And we glorify God for that. No goodness of our own, but it is the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And we pray that you will be able to stick with us, um, God willing, throughout the rest of the service tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if anyone has to leave, praise God for whatever reason during that time. Praise God. We pray that the blessings of the Lord be upon you and that God's face will shine upon you. Praise God. And keep you, praise God, and give you peace. And the blood of Jesus will be upon you, praise God. And that his strength will be with you. And that the angels will be encamped round about you, praise God. Because he said the angels camp round those that fear him, praise God. And we just glorify God for you. And we love you both in Jesus. At this time, praise God, we're going to hear, praise God, the adulterated, uncompromising word of God. Praise God, that's coming from none other, praise God, than God's son. Uh, God's bond servant, hallelujah, my husband, by the spirit of the living God, hallelujah, minister, Arthur Lee Weathersby, hear the spirit of God through him as he comes in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 we just thank God for this opportunity, for this occasion to uh, be in his presence, uh, we thank God again for Sound the Alarm Ministries, praise word and prayer call, amen, uh, as, as, as has been noted earlier, our, our scripture comes from Joel 2, 1 for the ministry, and our motto is, we are crying loud and sparing not. That's from Isaiah 58, 1, praise God. I just want to take time uh, uh, just to thank uh, my brother, uh, Minister Art Corley Jr. out of Bridgeton, New Jersey, amen, who signed on. I saw his post on Facebook that let me know that he was coming on, and I thank God that he just didn't come on by himself. He brought somebody else, another brother. Amen. I'm, I'm really excited about this because I'm on various different types of calls throughout the week. And sad enough to say I'm on a sacrificial praise line and I'm the only male representation that we have on a regular there. And I, Lord, it's beyond me why I can't get more brothers to come on to that praise line because the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. And as far as I know, that includes men too. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for you, brothers. Amen. Uh, back in my day, and I'm an old, I'm an old guy. There used to be a song that said, "Brothers gonna work it out." Amen. I think that was in the early seventies. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Brothers gonna work it out. And me and we know brothers gonna work it out. Yeah, we can say that, but we know someone who's already worked it out, and that's God Himself. And and how we know it's so, we gonna go to the Word. Amen. Let us go to Psalm. 51. Amen. I thought I was going to do something else, but the Lord had me do uh, had me do a little shift here about oh, seven minutes ago, eight minutes ago. Amen. So we're in Psalm 51. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible in its entirety, Psalm 51, from the Amplified Bible. And it reads this way. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to the multitude of your tender mercy and loving kindness, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly and repeatedly from my iniquity and guilt and cleanse me and make me wholly pure from my sin. For I am conscious of my transgressions and I acknowledge them. My sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and faultless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in a state of iniquity. My mother was sinful who conceived me, and I too am sinful. Behold, you desire truth in the inner being. Make me, therefore, to know wisdom in my inmost heart. Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean ceremonially. Watch me, and I shall be in reality be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. 
Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt and iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right, preserving and steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then will I teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted and returned to you. Deliver me from blood guiltness and death, O God, the God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness, your rightness and your injustice. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Amen. I think I'm going to be almost there to the end of the verse. And yeah, we're almost there. Amen. For you delight not in sacrifice or else would I give it. You find no pleasure in burnt offering. My sacrifice, the sacrifice acceptance to God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, broken down with sorrow for sin and humble and humbly and thoroughly uh, penitent. Such, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in the sacrifices of righteousness, justice, and right. With burnt offering and whole burnt offering, then bullocks will be offered upon your altar. I've read Psalm 51 in, in, in its entirety. The word of the Lord has already blessed me. He continues to bless the hearing, reading, doing of his word. As I'm apt to say these days, we need to be more than just hearers of the word. We absolutely must become doers of it as well. And before I go into prayer, I understand, I heard the ding. Uh, who just entered uh, the Sound the Alarms Ministries praise word and prayer call? If you don't mind, would you identify yourself, please? Praise God. Now, what's your, what's your name again? Moses Molina. Is that right? Is that right? Yes, sir. Are you a pastor? Okay, but praise God. Amen. Well, we thank God. We, that's another one of you. Amen. Sorry, you all right with me, sir. When you come, you just don't come by yourself. Praise the Lord. Uh-oh, there's somebody else. Praise the Lord. Well, praise God. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to introduce himself that entered in that, that has a praise request at this time? Amen. Well, we pray. Your father? Well, praise God. That, that's about, about five people we got on already? Okay, this is a celebration time for Sounding Alarm Ministries. I'm telling you, I was about ready to put out a post earlier today, Minister Art. I was about ready to put out a post early today, Minister Art, and I was about ready to say something like, you know what, in the last and evil days, men will not bear sound doctrine. <laughs> and, and that would explain why we have a hard time getting people to come to this praise word and prayer call. Amen. Because we ain't I'm not we ain't trying to make ourselves to be out nothing that we're not, but we absolutely will stand, we will stand steadfast in the word of God. And when that's all we're gonna stand on, we ain't coming up with nothing else. We ain't trying to say things that are gonna make people jump, sink, scream, and run all over the place shouting, we're going to give them what thus saith the Lord. Amen. And we thank you guys all for coming on. This is an exciting time. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. That's what I'm going to do. Most gracious and eternal Father, Lord God, I come to you right now to say thank you. Thank you, thank you God, for yet another God. opportunity and occasion you've given unto us to come forth and declare what thus saith the Lord. Now, God, I pray that as we prepare to go into your word that I know that Arthur, he must decrease. And therefore, the Lord God, you must increase. And as always, I'm mindful to say, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer, in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen, amen, amen. And before I give the subject, um, who just entered the, the, the Sound the Alarms Ministries praise word and prayer call? If you don't mind, would you introduce yourself? Hello? Who just? Oh, that's okay. That's quite all right, sir. We just making sure we want to get everybody in that that called in. Amen. This is a blessing for us. So we thank God for that. 
Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a subject here uh, from Psalm 51. We ain't going to do Psalm 51. It's in tight. I just read it there for effect, more or less. Uh, and, and the subject is, when, when you have true godly sorrow, when you have true godly sorrow, amen, we just thank God for that. Now, now this is a psalm. This is a psalm of David, uh, Psalm 51. And, and anyone that knows uh, the, the, the psalm of this particular psalm of David, Psalm 51, it came from a place that David had um, in his life. Amen. Uh, this is the psalm of David. Uh, uh, when the prophet, when the Nathan, the prophet came to him after he had sinned with his wife Bathsheba. Now, many of us know the story of David and Bathsheba. If we don't, I'm going to give a little backdrop, and we're going to get right into Psalm 51. What happened was, uh, David, the children of Israel, the people of Israel, went out to battle, and generally speaking, uh, they were led by their warrior king, King David. Not this time. Uh, this time, David stayed behind, and as he stayed behind. Uh, uh, he happened to be on one day out on the roof of his castle and he was surveying the land I'm sure as a king would do if you allow me to just to, uh, uh, just, to just to interject that or, or surmise that uh, uh, he was surveying the land and everything that you know it's, it's good to be the king hey, amen when you can come out on your palace and look out and see everything that you see comes under your your ownership and, and, and authority and then he happened to look down at one of the houses that was near him and he saw a woman, a woman who was out, uh, uh, and apparently, uh, unlike the homes of today, they may have had uh, tubs if they had tubs, and I presume they did, uh, amen, and, and their tub was not located in a bathroom, apparently, but this one might have been uh, up on the, on the roof somewhere, and, and, and this woman was out there taking a bath, and the, and the, and the Bible says that she was doing purification after, after that time of the year, and for a woman that's known as minister time of the year, the time of the month, I'm sorry, Lord have mercy, I know some, <laughs> which it was only a time of the year, but no, it's a monthly thing when they're in that way, amen, the ministerial cycle, ministerial cycle, yeah, she was purifying herself and, and cleansing herself, and David took time to took a gaze at her, and he's decided up to himself that he just had to have it, he king, whatever he says, you know, he sends out edicts every day. You know, um, and, and puts his signet to it, and they and they do whatever they tell him. So he told one of his servants, "Go fetch her." Lord have mercy, like she was somewhere. Oh yeah, that's what he said. Go fetch her, and they fetched her, and she came. Um, she was the wife of one of his chief uh, 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 warriors by the name of Uriah, the, uh, and I believe Uriah was a Hittite. Amen. Yeah, he was a Hittite, but he was a, a warrior for the King David and a great fighter. And he was out in the battle, and, and, and this was his wife. And David went and took his wife uh, that evening or that moment or whatever time it was. It probably didn't take long. And, and the word, and when the word of God says that she became pregnant. And so she became pregnant. So David, being a wise man, pretty smart, he, 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 he devised a plan. He says, send forth a uh, go out to send a message out to the battlefield and, and tell them to send me Uriah. And he brought Uriah back to the castle, fed him, gave him a drink, and wanted him to have a good time. And when he thought he was drunk enough, told him to go home and be with your wife. Enjoy yourself. You know, take advantage of the situation. Uriah left David's castle, but he didn't go no farther than the gates. He says, I can't do that. Um, my, my fellow warriors out there in battle, I can't go out and enjoy uh, the fruits of, of, of my wife when nobody else in my uh, company is, is, is enjoying anything like that. So he stayed out in front of the gates. Where it got back to David, that's what he did. He sent him back to the battlefield with strict orders to say, put him in the heat of the battle, but don't have him fortified. But put him out there where you know he's going to get killed. And he was. And then David married his wife. And then in 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, uh, starting at that first verse, you find where uh, the word came forth uh, about, to the prophet Nathan, and, and the Lord sent Nathan to David and gave him a little parable about a situation about two men. One man had a prized possession, and the other man took advantage of it. And David, in his, in his kingdom wisdom, in his, his godly uh, uh, wisdom, he says, uh, uh, kill the man. And, and the prophet said, well, that's you. Now we're at Psalm 51, because Psalm 51 came from uh, what David had did with uh, Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. Uh, 
Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to the multitude of your tender mercy and loving kindness, blot out my transgressions. One thing you have to understand when you have, when you really have godly sorrow, when you.